Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer. Uh, we are with uh, Padma Shri Awardee Dr. Subhash Kak. Subhash Kak ji, welcome to P Guru's channel. Thank you, Sri. Uh, glad to be here. Uh, looking forward to this conversation. Um, thank you, sir. My the pleasure is all mine. And and viewers, if you remember the last time we had uh, Dr. Subhash Kak over for a hangout, he was sporting a mustache. Now he is mustachioed less. So I guess. Uh, you know he's completely cured from that uh, accident, auto accident that he had in Mumbai. Yes, yes. In fact, I've had a couple of uh, phases of mustache and without mustache, and <laughs> you know, it's part of being free um, <laughs> and uh, part of uh, trying to find out what is what is it that looks the best. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, shout out to all our viewers. You can say we we like. Um, Subha Professor Subhash Kak with mustache or without mustache. You can vote on that and then we'll see how, just put it in the comments in this YouTube video and we'll, we'll see which one prevails. And then, you know, that's the takeaway for uh, Dr. Kak. He can or, you know, cannot, doesn't have to abide by that. But uh, more serious matters now. Uh, Dr. Kak, you recently had a very interesting experience in Iowa. Why don't you talk us through what happened where, why you were there in that university in the first place, and then what happened after that? I was at Iowa State University in Ames, Iowa, last uh, Thursday through Saturday, and we had some departmental seminars on quantum computing, but a university-wide lecture on uh, Indian uh, contributions to modern science and why Indian science is still relevant. It was a wonderful lecture in terms of the uh, organization. There were a lot of people in the hall. And uh, after the lecture ended, uh, which the lecture went on for almost one and a half hours, including questions, uh, a young lady walked up to the podium where I was chatting with people. And she asked me, she says, look, this is all great, but why are uh, BJP politicians uh, making uh, claims about transplantation of organs and aircraft travel and medicine, which was so advanced in the past and so on. Mm -hmm. And I told her that, look, uh, there are two things. First of all, uh, language uh, has to be understood as a device where not everything is literal truth. Sometimes you say you reach for the skies or reach for the stars. That doesn't mean that you're actually going to fly to the stars. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is that Indian science was truly the most advanced in the entire world for as recently as uh, four or 500 years ago. Right. And in the lecture, I did explain what happened and why uh, during the British rule, India's share of the world economy crashed from about 25% to just 1.4%. Can you believe it? In yes. 1918, which was one of the most catastrophic uh, phases in whole of world history of mass impoverishment. So I said, you know, you've got to look, out, look at all of this and that's when you can understand um, where Indian science was, which uh, scholars are quite um, well clear about that it was indeed um, the highest or the best in the entire world and what happened for it to fall to where it was and how we lost self-confidence. Atma Vishwas. And now that we don't have Atma Vishwas, we tend to doubt what our own culture and civilization had done, the most extraordinary things that we had done. And, and you know, top of that, on top of that, you have 30 million um, Sanskrit manuscripts, supposedly that have not been decoded yet. So there is a lot of our past that we don't know of. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's really regrettable that, uh, you know, we, we haven't had a, you know, co um, how should I say this thing, a cogent policy to try and understand where we came from, what was our, uh, uh, you know, Purvaj and so on and so forth. But that was a, that's a matter for a different uh, uh, hangout, uh, uh, Professor Ji. Now, you are, uh, you know, you are a computer scientist at heart. I mean, you, you teach computer science in Stillwater. Now, you do all this is perhaps something that it piques your interest, you know. And uh, how do you, you know, find the time to do all these things? 
Well, you know, there are two different ways uh, that we can approach education. One is the modern um, college education based on the philosophy that you must burden the student with as much of information as possible. The Indian way, which I believe is deeper, more powerful, is to make uh, the mind an instrument of something larger than us. So that uh, once uh, uh, that, uh, uh, that, that flame within the mind has been lit, then it's so easy to look at whatever subject one might be interested in, understand what the main, uh, main foundations of that subject are, and be able to make contributions. Now to come back to what you were saying about Sanskrit uh, manuscripts, a, a large number of those Sanskrit manuscripts are in the libraries in Kerala. Kerala was one of the greatest centers of Sanskrit scholarship. Yes, indeed, yes. And Kerala School of Mathematics, the scientific revolution is supposed to have occurred uh, in the minds of um, misinformed Western educated Indians with uh, Newton and Leibniz, but uh, infinite series and calculus was created in Kerala 200 years prior to that. And there is a very strong argument that's been made by many scholars that the Jesuits took that knowledge from India to Europe. And that's where it played a fundamental role in awakening Europe from the dark ages uh, as far as sciences were concerned and herald the scientific revolution. You know, um, there, there's uh, one, one question that people can ask is if India was indeed that advanced, how come they didn't have, uh, you know, planes or they didn't apply some of the mathematical concepts that they had founded? And it is my belief, and I could be wrong about this, that when the British came and landed in India, India had the best shipbuilding technology across the world. And, and uh, they said... I mean, this is again, I'm quoting uh, Rajiv Malhotraji here from one of his works. He said, uh, I don't remember the exact year, but uh, the British forbade the shipbuilding industry from building any more ships. It was completely gutted, stopped. Then they realized after 10, 20 years that others were not able to produce the same quality. But then they said, well, you can build ships, but it will be only for East India Company. And, and, and to give you a little bit more perspective on this, you remember that uh, the, the national anthem of uh, United States is sung when a certain person was trapped in a, bo a ship. And, and, and he was looking at the ramparts and he, sang, he came up with the verses of that. And evidently that ship was built in India. Oh, absolutely. This is uh, true. Historians do accept that Indian shipbuilding was uh, more advanced than that of any other nation. And uh, if India in, uh, say, 1750 had 25% of the world's uh, gross economic uh, pro product, uh, just imagine how much, how dominant that was to consider United States now, you know, the supremely rich country, right. has 17% of the world's uh, GDP at this time. And, uh, and prior to the coming of the British, India, India had been uh, engulfed in uh, battle with uh, attackers from outside. And about uh, 1000 or 1200 uh, AD or CE, India's share of the world economy was 30%. India That's was right. richer. And, and, and so it's not surprising that Europeans wanted to reach India, which is why Columbus set out to discover India. And when he landed um, at the shores, he called the people that he saw Indians. So India has played a central role, not only in geography, not only in, uh, uh, in uh, discovery of far away lands in the past four or 500 years, but more importantly, in the world of imagination, in the world of science, um, in the world of storytelling, because Indian stories, uh, Panchatantra and so on, finally traveled to uh, the West and became Aesop's fables and all that. Any field that you look, India has played a central role. And now that Indians ha have gained are in the process of gaining Atma Vishwas, there's no reason why we shouldn't uh, reclaim that central role for ourselves. 
Absolutely, sir. I couldn't agree with you more. And thank you very much for a very enlightening discussion. And we hope to have you back uh, again soon on many other topics. Some of the things that uh, we would like to discuss with you, I think I've told you this before, is proof of Pythagoras theorem. You know, it's, it's given in the form of a verse. And we would like you to break it down for our viewers, what exactly was meant in that, and, and so on and so forth. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Subhash Kak. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.